if you really want to kind of pinpoint where the start of the changes began, it was streaming. Uh, Netflix started it coming out and saying streaming is the future. And that was probably around 2016. They started in 2008, but really kind of picked up around 2016, 2017. That's when, when the other companies started looking at Netflix's model. What happened was then the pandemic hit. Now, all of a sudden, the entire nation is sitting in their living rooms watching TV and streaming this need to basically create a streaming model just went into hyperdrive, went into warp speed. So all of a sudden Disney and NBC and CBS or Paramount networks are saying, oh my gosh, we got to catch up to Netflix's model. They're killing us right now. So, and Wall Street was like, that sounds great. We're all in, here's a bunch of money. And we just had this sort of creation bonanza of content. They were making films, they were making television shows. Um, the work was just coming out of a fire hose. Around 2022, I would say maybe spring 2022 was when Netflix kind of came out and announced, we're not making money. Um, we destroyed this entire advertising model that worked great for between 50 and 70 years. We blew it up. Uh, we thought we have a subscriber based system, but eventually you run out of subscribers. Eventually you got a plateau, right? There's only so many people in the world that are going to start kind of financing your company. Also, television was always free in a sense, mm -hmm. meaning that traditional broadcast, you know, TV was a way for advertisers to sell their product with material in between to kind of keep you engaged. So to switch to the subscriber-based system where you're first starting out saying, hey, do you want to pay $6.99 a month? Do you want to pay $7.99 a month? Actually, you know, to make our shows, we're going to need you to pay $14.99 a month. Actually, if you really don't want to watch for the commercials, it's going to be $25 a month. So all of a sudden, these streamers became incredibly greedy and they're losing money really bad. At the same time, you have traditional cable, you have traditional broadcast, which that demographic is starting to age out. Nobody's watching <laughs> no offense, but the people that are watching traditional broadcasts and traditional cable, that demographic is getting older and older and older. That's not the consumer demographic anymore. So what you're seeing is cable is becoming obsolete, but these there's only like five major media conglomerates that run everything. And cable is still a necessity to put on the air, but is now becoming a major financial suck to these companies. So now they're in a pickle where it's like, we want to create more with streaming, which is also fighting this need to retain an audience against other social media platforms like TikTok, like Instagram Reels, and YouTube, which is now cornered about 10% of the entire streaming market, which is content that is made by individuals and not the traditional gatekeepers. So we're now in this world where the traditional media conglomerates that would oversee media have run out of money and the audience is being diluted completely. So that is sort of the crisis where we are at. And we've just, and on top of that, these, um, the media companies are kind of going through what the audio, what they're kind of going through what the auto industry did about, 15 years ago, they're saying, hey, you know, it's cheaper to make a TV show or a movie in South Africa. It's actually cheaper to fly the entire, you know, to fly the heads of the department abroad to Eastern Europe and get a local crew there. We don't have to deal with the unions anymore. Why do we have to do TV or film in Los Angeles? California is the most expensive state. Let's all move to Georgia. And now they're saying, well, actually, Georgia is expensive, too. The film in the U.S. is expensive. Why don't we just outsource this? And now we're seeing sort of this um, mass exodus of production jobs from everywhere.